friends, it's been a while since I've made a uh, tarot video and I have uh, the Llewellyn Tarot to review for you today. It's hopefully going to be a brief review. I know there are a lot of other reviews on YouTube and I just wanted to give my take on the deck. This is one of my favorite decks. I find it to be beautiful. Um, the artwork, Anne-Marie Ferguson is the uh, artist. She is also the artist who made the Arthurian Tarot a few years before this Llewellyn Tarot was released. Now this Llewellyn Tarot was named after Carl Wesky Llewellyn, who founded the Llewellyn uh, Company here in the U.S. after he came here from Wales. And as you know, Llewellyn is a big producer of tarot and, um, and other uh, esoteric material, Wicca and so forth, books, cards, and that sort of thing. So we have this coming to us from Llewellyn. It's got the name of their founder, who is the namesake of the deck. And he came from Wales. So this is a deck that's uh, centered on Welsh mythology. Now the deck came in a typical Llewellyn box, which was a big box that held the, um, held the book and the cards and did not have a smaller uh, book or um, pouch or anything to keep the cards in. So that's sort of disappointing. You'd think they would have done something like that for a uh, deck that's a namesake for their company, but they didn't do it. So I am keeping it in this uh, cosmetics pouch from Bear Essentials. Whatever works. I thought it was kind of a nice little pouch. It's sturdy and yet see-through. So that's what I used for this deck because I just absolutely adore this deck. Now the book, pretty hefty. It's close to 300 pages. I think it's 268. And uh, I don't want to bore you too much with running through the book, but the book has uh, general information on tarot information on Welsh mythology or the unique feature of this deck is that the major arcana features um, figures and incidents from Welsh mythology and the book explains them to you several pages on each of the major arcana cards. The minor arcana are typical rider weight. They're simply illustrated uh, in a similar art style to the major arcana and they're sort of they're very rider weight. They're not unique like the Major Arcana. And personally, I would have preferred if they had just done the Miners with Pips. I really, this Major, the, the Minor Arcana in this deck just, I, I personally don't like uh, rider weight. The Court cards are great, but here we have the Ten of Wands. Just very typical Rider weight. It's one interpretation. There's no room for any other interpretation. That is my issue with Rider weight style decks. But for somebody who's just learning tarot, this would be a fantastic deck. So let me go through and just show you. Uh, the book does have black and white pictures, grayscale, I guess you call it, of the majors. And I believe they also suit of swords. Okay, I believe they also, uh, yeah, there's also grayscale pictures and little interpretations of the minors. They give regular and reversed interpretations for all the minor cards. So it's a very thorough book. It's very worth having. It's the kind of a book you could curl up with in front of your fireplace. This whole deck is just very cozy, comfy feeling. It's warm in color. Um, it's beautiful, watercolor, earth tones. I just absolutely adore this deck. So here we have the Fool, Peridur. Gwydion, the Magician. Now I know a lot of people that I've seen uh, their videos on YouTube, they have actually trimmed this deck down. I would not want to trim this deck down because I think the borders add to the uh, add to the uh, main picture. I love the borders actually, and I love the the font and the script. I love that it's got the traditional um, moniker for the card, the magician, and then 
the name of the specific uh, person that's being portrayed in the card on top. And just look at the colors in this card. It's so beautiful. Purple and green, gold, very regal. Here we have Caridwen, otherwise known as the High Priestess. Got the element of water, cobweb above her head. Interesting, just, just really lovely. For the Empress, we have Rhiannon. Here is Braun as the Emperor. I absolutely love this Emperor card. Well, it's one of my favorite cards in all the decks, but this one is especially lovely. I love his relaxed uh, demeanor. The sumptuousness of the robe and the drapery behind. He looks very confident and very relaxed. It's just a beautiful Emperor card. Braun was a giant in the mythology of Wales. Teliason, I hope I'm saying that right, as the Hierophant. So he is a uh, famous Welsh bard, poet. And back in the day, that was how they recorded their history, was through the writings of uh, bards and poets. Here we have the lovers. chariot. Just really spectacular. Strength. We have a boar instead of a uh, feline. <laughs> we have a man instead of a woman, but I really like this card. I mean, she did an excellent job of reinterpreting these to Welsh mythology. Just beautiful. Here we have the hermit. I love how they incorporated the nature elements with this hermit, even into his clothing and the snake, the snake at his feet. And that's actually Merlin, the magician, or Murden, as they call it. Here's Arianrod, who was a goddess. She was sort of an evil mother type, but she was considered to be a goddess of the wheel of the year. So here we've got the wheel. Lady of the Fountain for Justice. Just really, really beautiful. The Hanged Man. The Enchantment of Dyfed. So a, a Welsh tale. Here we have death, a beautiful death card. Now this card is like the ultimate temperance card. It's called Keeper of the Well. She's underwater. She's got her um, vessel there pouring water underwater. So it's kind of like the ultimate melding, the ultimate temperance. It's really beautiful. Just a lovely card. The Wild Herdsman, or the Horned One, in place of the Devil. And this is in keeping with the pagan theme of the deck. Pagans uh, do not believe that there is such an entity as the Devil. But we do have a Horned One, which is sort of a nature icon. So I really enjoy that this is not a uh, remake of the medieval Christian tarot. It's replaced the Christian symbology with pagan symbology and that's great. Here's the tower which is Bala Lake which apparently according to legend uh, was it ended up being engulfed by water. Bronwyn the star. Beautiful star card. 
the bird, the standing stones, the moon. This is sort of an interesting moon card. At first glance, you would think, this is called Lake of Maidens. At first glance, you would think, oh, you know, the moon, uh, the owl is a creature of the night to represent the moon, which is, which is all true and well and good. But the legend behind the owl in this card is there was a, um, a wife created for Bran, who was portrayed as the emperor, and her name was Blodewed, and she was made out of flowers. But she betrayed him, and um, she had sought another lover. So she was turned into an owl. And even today, owls, I guess, in uh, are also called Lodewed, which is flower face. Kind of a cute little story. And for the sun, we have Lula Gif. I don't know if I said it correctly, but it's a wonderful sun card. The power, the radiance, the confidence. Just perfect. As I said, this is one of my favorite decks for Major Arcana. Then we have Judgment. The Sleepers. The Universe. And this is a region, portraying a region of Wales uh, in the mountains, which I kind of enjoy that sort of a reference. It sort of reminds me of Mount Olympus for the Greeks or uh, any type of a fable where the mountain and the uh, isolation and the height kind of represent the universe or the gods. And you can see a figure here also. And then we get into the minors, which are pretty. Here we have cups. I think I'm going to take a second and just organize these in groups as I usually do. So, I'll so be before we go on, let's take a look at the back of the cards. It's got the um, red dragon of Wales on there. Just beautiful. A very very much a nature theme deck and I like the wood grain on the back of the cards so let's move on to looking at the aces the aces are beautiful in the Rider Waite tradition we have the wands swords cups and pentacles very Rider Waite with the hand coming out kind of a deified reach there, the twos, two of wands, two of swords, two of cups, two of pentacles. Next we have the threes, three of wands, three of swords, three of cups, Three of Pentacles. That's a rather dear Three of Pentacles. I really like that. Moving on to the Fours. Four of Wands. Four of Swords. Four of Cups. Four of Pentacles. Next we have the fives, the card of instability, five of wands, five of swords, five of cups, and five of pentacles. Really lovely Five of Pentacles. On to the Sixes. Six of Wands. Six of Swords. Six of Cups. 
six of pentacles. Now you could trim this deck down if you wanted to, but personally I like it like this. But every uh, every suit, court, uh, suit card has the number of the elements that it's named for. For instance, seven cups are in there, seven pentacles are in there, seven swords are in there, so you could trim it and still know what you were dealing with. Let's get a closer look. The seven of wands. Seven of Swords, Seven of Cups, and Seven of Pentacles. On to the Eights. I love this Eight of Wands. So beautiful. Eight of Swords. Also really gorgeous. I love that it's on the ocean. Kind of contributes to that feeling of instability and malaise. Eight of Cups and Eight of Pentacles. Moving on to the Nines. Nine of Wands. Nine of Swords. A really beautiful Nine of Cups. Absolutely divine. I love it. Nine of Pentacles. I would have liked that to have been a little more lush and green. That's not my favorite Nine of Pentacles, but the rest of the deck is so beautiful. I can forgive it. All right, now on to the tens. The culmination of their suit and their element. We have the Ten of Wands. Ten of Swords. Ten of Cups. Another beautiful, beautiful card. I love it. Ten of Pentacles. Really pretty. Nine, ten. <laughs> you have to look for number ten. And now we'll move on to the court cards. Page. These are the pages for each suit. Page of Wands. Page of Swords. Page of Cups, and Page of Pentacles. Love the poppies down there in the left corner. Next we have the Knights. So this is Rider Waite. We have Page, Knight, Queen, King. We don't have Princess, Prince, Queen, and Knight. We have Page, Knight, Queen, and King. So the whole deck is completely Rider Waite. There's nothing non-rider weight about it. Knight of Wands, Knight of Swords. I love that card. Really conveys the essence of the Knight of Swords. Action. Inspiration. Here we have the Knight of Cups and the Knight of Pentacles. Plodding along toward his planned goal. Now we have four very beautiful queens. All these cards are really lovely. Queen of Wands with her sunflower, beautiful. Queen of Swords with the bird, the cloudy skies. Queen of Cups. I love the fish imagery there the green and blue watercolors, and the Queen of Pentacles. And last but not least, we have our Kings. All 
very regal on their thrones. King of Wands. I love that he's got the salamander down there. King of Swords. The good mate to the queen we saw earlier. King of Cups, again, matches the queen very nicely with the seashell throne and the fish in the water, the ocean. And King of Pentacles. So that is a quick run through of the Llewellyn Tarot. I hope you enjoyed running through the cards with me. I didn't spend a lot of time um, editorializing, but uh, I love this deck. I use it quite a bit. I spend a lot of time using it for meditation because I find it so relaxing and entrancing and just gorgeous. So take care and we'll see you next time. I had to come back and do a little addendum to the video because I gave you some misinformation. It's my fault. I knew I shouldn't have gotten into the Welsh mythology. I knew that I probably would not have gotten facts straight. And sure enough, the one thing that I mentioned was that I believe Blodewed was created out of flowers for Bronn, but actually she was not. It was somebody else. So let's go quickly into the story. This is Arianrod, who's the goddess of the stars, the night. Her name literally means silver wheel. So she's also considered the goddess of spinning and she's considered a virgin goddess. So she had two sons who she did not want to own up to because she was considered to be a maiden. And her brother was the magician Gwydion. Her son was Lula Gif. I hope I said that correctly. He's the one who's portrayed in this deck as the sun, the sun card. And Gwydion took Lu under his wing. And being a magician, he was able to help him out in several ways. Well, one of the curses that Arianrod put on her son, Lu, was that he could never have a human wife. So Gwydion, trying to help out, created Blodewed. He, she was made from flowers of the oak, broom, and meadow sweet. And it created a beautiful maiden to be Lu's wife. Well, later, Blodewed had an affair with another man, and the two conspired to kill Lu. So Gwydion eventually turned Blodewed into an owl, and the name Blodewed literally means flower face, and I believe Blodewed is the Welsh name for the owl, which is synonymous with the flower face. So that's the story behind that, briefly in a nutshell. There's a lot more to it, but of course, if I tried to go into it, I'd probably get it wrong. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the little addendum. Thanks. Bye.